Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Clouds of Darkness for episode 10. Now, last episode, we set up this little guy over here, the Lava Generator, as well as a couple more pulverizers and some Enderio item conduits to automate the process of turning our cobblestone from cobblestone, from the cobblestone generator, into lava in the crucible, which is then used to power the lava generator, which powers all of our pulverizers, which turn cobblestone into gravel, then into sand, then into dust, round to be sifted. And I have left this system running for quite a long time since the end of last episode. And although it's not the fastest system in the world, and right now I think we need a little bit more lava before we can have it like fully sustained and running at max speed, because if you have a look, um, we're kind of running low on power, and this guy is pretty much out of lava, because this thing doesn't produce all that much at all. In fact, if you look over on the right here, you'll see fluid lava levels are at zero, although sol solid cobblestone levels are slowly dropping, which means it is producing lava. As you can see, these pipes are still full, but it's not producing enough lava to keep this lava, generating, uh, lava generator, should I say, running at full speed. So we could probably do with making a few more crucibles. We should probably also make a few more of the lava generators because each of these produce, I think, 40 redstone flux per tick. I believe that's what it says uh, up here. And then each of the full pulverizers, if we want them to run at max speed, also require 40 redstone flux per tick. But either way, if we have a look in here, if you leave it on for long enough, we got a butt ton of stuff, which is actually really nice because this is what we needed to progress with this mod pack. We have 17 glowstone, 11 blocks of redstone, which is actually a butt ton of redstone. That's 99 redstone. Uh, some lapis, uh, quite a bit of bone meal. Each of these equals nine bone meal, which is really nice. This is blocks of gunpowder, uh, blocks of sky stone, and then a bunch of ores, including almost 40 iron dust, which, if we play our cards right today, should equal about 120 iron ingots. It's about two stacks, which will be really flipping nice. I also made a couple of other changes to the little island that we've got here since the end of last episode. You may, you may notice I've taken down the Mahusive rubber tree there. I was going to say farm. Uh, just the Mahusive rubber tree that we had. Uh, I think it was a mega rubber sapling we placed down. It was kind of crazy. At, at the start, I just kind of nerd pulled up with some shears. I took like four sets up. And we got a butt ton of rubber leaves. Look at this. We got 28. Uh, luckily, we can use these to make dirt, which is very nice indeed. Will help a lot with farming. So we can kind of do stuff like this. Unfortunately, all of our bowels are full of rain again. But that's fine because it always flipping rains in this world. And it's always very really dark as well. But uh, then again, that's maybe why they call it Clouds of Darkness. So uh, anyway, we'll throw that in there. And what I want to do today, I don't think I mentioned, I made some more barrels. It's kind of obvious. We kind of had, I just want more stuff to be easily accessible. So I threw a bunch of barrels in there. And what I want to do today is I want to upgrade our method of turning these dusts into ingots. Because at the moment, we have to kind of pull it out of here, walk all the way over here, throw it in there, wait for it to smell, and then pull it out by hand. Actually, we did upgrade this, so it now pulls it out automatically. But I would like to upgrade this just a little bit to, uh, to actually triple our ores and to take it automatically from the, the chest over there that has all the dust in to the smelting mechanic. And I say smelting mechanic because we're not going to use the Tinker Smeltery. No, we are going to change things up and we are going to use a Tinker Steelworks, which is another mod by, I believe, the same person who made Tinker's Construct. I'm saying that without any knowledge whatsoever. I'm just assuming because it's the same name. And that is Tinker Steelworks. And what we can do with that is we can make ourselves what's known as the high oven. And what's cool about the high oven is that A, it triples ores, which is flipping fantastic. So for every single one of these iron that we have in here, we should get three iron ingots back, which is really nice. And two, one thing that for us in this little sky factory world that we have that's going to make it better than the uh, smeltery over here is the fact that it doesn't mix ingots together into alloys. So for instance, if we were to just dump all of that stuff in that chest, obviously not the redstone and stuff, but all of the metals in this chest into the smeltery right now, it wouldn't work. Well, it would work. They'd all smelt up if we had enough lava. But things like uh, copper and aluminium would uh, combine together to make aluminium brass. Things like iron and nickel would combine together to make uh, invar and stuff like that. And we don't want that. We don't want a bunch of invar and a bunch of aluminium brass. We need it occasionally, but for the most part, it's lightning out there. <laughs> but for the most part, we want all of our iron to be in iron form, and then if we would like ferrous, we can go ahead and do that at a later point. So that's another feature the high oven has. It doesn't combine into alloys, which is really nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start making this. It's fairly easy to make once you have a tinker smell tray and a butt ton of clay. You can see we, quite, we need a lot of these uh, scorched bricks, which are made using seared stone and bricks. I believe you can also use uh, brick blocks like so. Yeah, brick blocks and seared stone as well. I don't know. Are these bricks and the other one just brick? Yeah, it is. But I always call these bricks, and I always call these bricks as well. So it doesn't really make any sense. Either way, I've gone ahead and smelted up a bunch of our clay. You can see we have, I think, like 20 blocks, 35 blocks. We made a, a stack last episode, I want to say, but I might be wrong about that. Uh, we made a stack of uh, clay, so we have a bunch of stuff. I'm going to smelt up a little bit more because I think we might need some. And just to speed things up, I'm going to do this. 
And I'm going to go ahead and do this. So we can go ahead and get ourselves a bunch of seared brick really quickly. And we do want to be careful because we don't want to make 100% uh, these. Uh, where's it gone? These. There, there, there we go. We don't want to make 100% scorched bricks because we do, of course, need... Oh, come on. Can I... No. You failed me. <laughs> because we don't want... We do need some of them to make, like, the uh, the, the controller, the tank. Actually, we don't need a tank. We need the controller, the, uh, the drain, and... I believe there's another one. Yeah, the duct. And the duct we'll get to in just a second. It's kind of core block that is going to help us out a ton. So, let me do a little quick cal uh, calculation here. We need six. Uh, then we need eight more. So, we need 14 there. And then six more from that. So, we need 20 of those. We just threw 16 into there. So, we are going to need one more block worth of clay. I don't know why I pulled out all 35. But if we do that and that, I think we should have enough stuff to get ourselves started. Let's drink some raspberry juice so we don't die. And the basis of this is it hits me a 3 by 3 multi-block. And it could be up to, I believe, 7 blocks tall, if I'm not mistaken. I thought it used to be 8, but I did a bit of testing in a single-player world before we started. And I'm pretty sure it's 7. And looking in the smeltery, I realize that we are pretty much really, really low on cobblestone. So, what I'm going to do... Uh, the way you get see it's done, by the way, into the smeltery, it's just cobblestone in the smeltery. It's actually really easy stuff. Is I'm going to go ahead and make a bunch of these, some compressed cobblestone. If you craft nine cobblestone together like this, you get compressed cobblestone. And what we can do with compressed cobblestone is we can throw that in the smeltery instead of cobblestone. And it smelts at the same rate, but you get more cobblestone. You get more seared stone from it, which is pretty nice indeed. And that's not right. <laughs> that's right. There we go. And then we'll do something like this and like that. Grab you. Do we have enough to make another set? The answer is maybe. We do. We have enough to make two more sets. And that will allow us to do this, I guess. If we want to make one triple compressed cobblestone. By the way, for those who don't know, again, that can go all the way up to octuple compressed cobblestone, which is 43 million cobblestone. It's actually a butt ton of cobblestone. But if we go ahead and do all that, you can see this stuff uh, is smelting up at the same speed, but we'll get less uh, seeded stone from this than we will from the triple compressed. That should thaw up in just a second once all of those smelt up. Let's go ahead and do that. How are we doing on lava? We're doing fairly well. And what I'm going to do is we're going to set up the base of this guy, uh, the, 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 the high of him. So, to start with that, we're going to need some slabs. I'm going to build a little platform right about here. The reason I'm going to build it here and not kind of over here with the smell tray is because I want it to be really easy. Uh, ooh, almost. I want it to be really easily accessible from this chest here where all of our stuff is being produced. So, we're going to go, I think, about here. And I may have to regret this because I have no idea if that's central or not. I think it... Yeah, I want to. And then want to. Yeah, I think it is. That's right. That's right. And then we'll go like this. We'll bring out three because it does need to be three by three. So we'll do that. We'll do that. And then we'll start building it. Like so. Can we get you there? We can. Like that. So we need a little, ni a little nine block three by three platform at the bottom. And then we need a bunch more to actually finish this up. So what I think I'm going to do, as you can see, we've got a bunch there, is I'm going to go ahead and finish doing all of these books here. We can do the same thing for this stuff over here. If we grab, uh, if we actually put some fuel in there, that would work a bit better. Uh, we don't have much coal, but I think we do have quite a bit of wood. We do. I think we have some more rubber wood somewhere as well. Let me uh, quickly lock that. Not like that. <laughs> I'm going to lock that so that it stays with wood, even if we take all the wood out of it. Let's grab you. Thank you very much. Let's... Uh, yeah, let's throw some rubber wood in there. That's fine. Yeah, I'm going to go smell that up with, uh, with the other one. It's just the same as you would with uh, any sort of ingot. We can go ahead and throw... Th oh, that's why it's going away. We don't want you there. Thank you. <laughs> if we go ahead and throw down that and then use a faucet instead, we're going to have to go grab another faucet. But if we grab a faucet, eh, actually, we can really easily make a faucet because we have a ton of this seared brick now. We can make a really tall smell tree now that we've decided not to use the smell tree. Jeez. But so we can go ahead and I'll just show you this real quick. Like so. We'll make a seared faucet. We'll hook that up again. And in order to make just the normal scotch bricks, you just do it as you kind of expect. Not you. There you go. Uh, pull that over that. That's got pulled out and set right on to there. So I'm going to go ahead and make all of these. I'm also going to make all of these. And I'll be back in a second. Okay. So a little while later, and we have ourselves 15 of these Scotch bricks and 21 of these Scotch brick. So what we should be able to do now is go ahead and do something like this. Get ourselves a high oven controller like that. Get ourselves a high oven drain, I believe, like that. And I think... We, uh, sorry, a scorch drain, and I believe we can get a duct by doing that. Nice. Okay, so we do need all three of these. Uh, actually, to be fair, I don't think... 
Hmm. You can see how it says item input slash output with the high oven. This is actually really helpful. I'm not sure if you need to actually make the multi block, but it is very useful. So you should probably make one anyway uh, if you're going to make this. And basically, the way you do this, it's a little 3x3. Three three. I, I don't believe you can make it any bigger than 3x3 three three unless it's changed for 1.7. But for now, we're going to do it like this. The top does need to be closed off like that. Make sure there's the one by one gap in the middle. And then at the front, we're going to have ourselves the high oven controller, the drain. And for now, I'm going to put this facing this way. Like that, and you'll see why in a second. And then finally, one, two, three. And if you've done it all right, when you right-click on the high oven controller, you should see this interface here. Just to show you real quick, if I get rid of this, and then wait a second and right-click again, you'll see that it doesn't show up. So you'll know you've done it right if you right-click, and it shows up with the high oven interface. Now, this has a multitude of functions, including all of these slots here. Uh, the way I'm not going to worry about today, because this thing can be used to make, like, steel, and I believe pig iron, and a couple of other ingots that we're not going to use right now, we're just going to use this as a audibling system or tripling system, I guess. So we don't need to worry about those. All we need to worry about is this slob here, and this slot down here. Now, you'll notice that this is the uh, the heat slot. This is where you put the fuel in it. Unlike with the Tinker Smelter, it doesn't run on lava. It runs on charcoal or other similar fuels. But I think the only one that you can use that's from, say, Vanilla Minecraft or any of the basic, like, commonly used mods. The only uh, fuel you can use is charcoal. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and throw a bunch of oak wood into there. You'll see I pulled out the uh, the alloy smelter again. I, I kind of remember that we had this lying around. I thought, why, why am I not using the alloy smelter? We have a ton of them. We have a, a... This is much, much faster than this guy over here. So, I'm just going to go ahead and do that again. Uh, is that right? Is, is that faster than that? I don't think it is. I think it's better if we do this and throw planks in instead like that. So, that should go ahead and start smelting the charcoal. And then the way this works is we're going to throw the charcoal into here. And then to activate the high oven, we need a lever. And we just need to stick it down either below or above the high oven controller and, and flick it on. So, do we have one lying around? If not, it's not too big of a deal. We can always go ahead and make one. Do we have any... We had a bunch of sticks. Where have they all gone? That was uh, a bit of a silly placement. But that's fine. Um... I was sure we had a bunch of sticks, but apparently not. Uh, let's get rid of you. You can see I have reorganized my chest a little bit. We have now uh, tools and armor, which is kind of just, you guessed it, tools and armor. Sieve drops are still the same. I've, I've put this one, books and thorncraft. I don't know if this should be a chest, but we had a few books, so I decided to make one. Uh, blocks and slabs, and then just random stuff, because I couldn't really organize those. Hopefully, we can get a, uh, an AE system at some point soon, so we can get ourselves. We don't have to worry about all this organizational stuff. But for now, let's do that. Let's grab a piece of cobblestone, which will be in blocks and slabs. And we should be able to do something like this. Nice. We'll take that. And we'll flick this on like so. Uh, not there. We got access to that bottom block because of the slab. So we'll put it there. Flick it on. And that should start to work. Yeah, you can see it's turned on. And it should start to fuel like a normal furnace would. And you'll see the temperature goes up. So the way the high oven works is it's kind of... I'm trying to think of another block that's like it. I can't really think of one right now. But basically what happens is you put your fuel in. In this case, we're using charcoal. And the temperature will rise. And if you keep if you keep fuel in there, it will keep using up the fuel. And the temperature will keep rising until I think it hits about 2,000 degrees Celsius. At which point it'll stop. But if you take the coal out of it and you don't put any more in, the temperature will drop. And it will go slower and slower. And the, faster, the higher the temperature, the faster the high oven works. Kind of self-explanatory, I guess. So you kind of want to make sure that you have constant, a constant supply of charcoal in this guy at all times. Which is something we're going to work on next episode. And you'll have to wait and see till then before we can uh, figure out what we're going to do for that. But for now, we can go ahead and throw that in there. And the way this works is basically, let's grab, say, you, one of our iron ore dusts. Throw that into this slot up here, like so. And you'll see it starts to smell up. Now, if you'll see right now, it's pretty slow. It's not the fastest thing in the world. Once it gets up to 2,000 degrees, this thing will be very, very fast. And it will be very, very nice indeed. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a, another faucet. And I'm actually going to take a bunch of these because we're going to make a casting table as well. So let's go ahead and do something like this. You can use uh, the Tinker's casting table and the Tinker's faucet on the high oven. So we'll take that and that. Please give me those back. Thank you very much. And we're going to do something like this. You can go there. We'll get rid of you. I won't use a pickaxe because that's not how we do things. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and throw you down like so. And once this is done, which shouldn't be too long now, we should be able to pull three ingots of iron out of here, which will be pretty nice. Come on. <laughs> I believe you can also use blocks of charcoal in this as well, if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I'm not quite sure how... I haven't checked it. Just I know in Crash Landing when I played with this last week, could use blocks of charcoal as well. So let's take you. Let's smell up a bit more charcoal because I don't want the temperature to run down. Although I don't think we're really in any, uh, any state for that to happen anytime soon. 
Come on. You can see it is fairly slow, though it is going up pretty fast. It's going about four degrees at a time, which uh, about a second every second, maybe, which is uh, pretty fast, pretty fast. It should be up at 2,000 fairly soon. Come on, you're almost there. Let me show off how awesome you are at tripling ingots. There we go. Okay. And you can see that's three molten iron. Nice. So we can pull all that out and we get ourselves three ingots for every one of our dust, which is much more efficient than the uh, the smeltery here. And even more efficient than I think most of the things apart from mechanism, which we'll get a bit, we'll get onto in, in the later game because mechanism for right now is kind of a bit more power intensive and not nearly as easy to set up. So let's go ahead and grab you. That gets us three iron ingots. Very nice indeed. And the final little piece of the puzzle here is to show you what this does. Uh, over here and basically this allows you to input and export items from the high oven with extreme ease it's very very nice what we can do is we can go in here we can flick through until we're at the ingot section like that and then we can just hook up some item ducts like this and we're going to try and hook it up over here. We might have to make, uh, actually, we're definitely going to have to make a couple more conduits to make this work. But that should be fine because we have ourselves some pulsating iron over there. And I think we even have some pulsating nuggets lying around somewhere, I want to say. But I might be talking out my ass here and just lying completely. And it looks like I am. So we'll take our other ingot of, um, of pulsating iron, turn it into a nugget, do something like this. Grab a bunch of item conduits and then do something like this. Boom. Boom. Now, we do want to be careful with this. And we're probably going to want to filter some stuff out. Now, hmm, the way that I would probably be best... The way that would probably be best to do this is... Do we have any transfer nodes lying around? We do. And we can make an item filter fairly easily using some string and some sticks. Now, we have a button of string over here. Uh, I also went through and took out most of the mob drops and moved them over here as well. So if there was uh, any mob drops in this chest like string, even though it's not exclusively a mob drop, uh, mob drop we got a lot of it from the, uh, the tree farm. I have moved it over here nonetheless. So let's get rid of you. And if we type in filter, we can go ahead and do something like this. And then that, if we get ourselves a little bit of redstone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter out everything that's not... Everything that's an ore. Everything that can be turned into metal, I'm going to filter out. So let's grab you. Uh, for now, I'm going to take out everything to do with gravel. Because right now, we don't really need... We're not going to get any more of this stuff. Because we have only dust coming through here. And we're going to get rid of you. And we're going to get rid of some of you as well. And try not to lose them. There we go. And if we do something like this... And then stick another chest right next to it, which again, we have quite a few of in here. We have 11 chests just lying around, geez. And we do something like this. And basically, all we want to do is, first of all, dump most of this gravel stuff. We will go ahead and throw this into the high oven as well, eventually. But for now, we can just throw it on there. We might even break it down into the dust versions and then use those. But for now, let's stop that. I don't want you doing that. Let's go ahead and organize our inventory and grab one of each of these. Now, I don't think we have quite enough slots in the um, in the, the the filter here to support all of these. But that's fine. We want to, oh no, we're one too many. Ah, jeez. Okay. Uh, for now, I think actually I don't even know if osmium is going to work. So for now, I'm not going to put osmium in. But in the future, what we can do is we can actually stack item filters and put more than one item filter into each one of these, which will make things a lot easier. But for now, let's just do this like so. Stick that filter, stick this item, uh, transfer node back down. Like so. Stick the filter in there, grab all of this junk and put it back in. And that should start to pull out only the stuff that is smeltable in the high oven. Again, grab all that back and do something like that. And I believe that should work. So we'll just do that. And yeah, as you can see, it's not pulling out the other stuff, which is pretty nice. And again, finally, we'll do this. We'll set this to in out. Like that. This should be already set to extract. It is. We want to make sure it's set to extract without redstone signal because we're not applying a redstone signal. And that should put some stuff into this top slot. And it is, as you can see there. And then finally, the last thing we want to do is exactly the same thing we have over here. We're going to go ahead and put down a bunch of items onto it. Going to a chest like so. So now, again, I'm probably going to have to go have a bucket and sort of lower myself down to get this to work. But once we do have it working, it will be very, very nice indeed. So let's set you up like that. And I'm not going to build a platform like I did before. I'm just going to kind of do, uh, try and set this up mid-water mid, mid -water flow here. I'm going to go hold shift. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that works. 
That works just fine. And then we'll, we'll head back up. That should work perfectly. Thank you very much. And if we do something like this, come up one and stick down another one of our chests, we should be good to go. Let's grab you. You can go down on there. And what we should be able to do now, you can see, oh my gosh, there's a bunch of backed up stuff here, which is very nice indeed. I'll back up and threaten to hear when it's done. You can see we are up to 1,820 degrees. It is cooking through that aluminium like it's nobody's business. And now we can go ahead and throw down one more of our fluid conduits. Look at that, boom. One left in our inventory. I think I have some more uh, hanging around somewhere. But if we do that and we set you to extract... Without redstone, that should start to fill that up. That should pull that out if we set that to extract without redstone as well. Which could take a while, so I think we have to go back down with that. Dum, 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 dum. Oh, there we go. Without redstone. Yeah, there we go. And with that, guys, I think we are pretty much good to go. So let's oh, let's not pick that up just yet. Let's oh my god. That that would not have been fun. That would not have been fun. I don't think we have anything too important on us right now, but even so, that would still not have been very fun. Whew. Jeez. Okay. Let's let's not do that again. <laughs> Please. There we go. Let's put you back. Uh, one last thing that we can do before we wrap up here is we can show you how to upgrade this uh, this high oven. Because right now, as you can see, there's only one slot. You can see it's maxed out at 2,000 degrees here. You can see it is going pretty freaking fast, which is very, very nice. Are you extracting? You are not. Really? I went through all of that and you're not even extracting. I should be extracting. Oh no, we need to change this to Ah Flipping flipping end IO conduits, you know? I love them, but I wish by default they weren't set to extract. I wish by default they would set like these ones to in and out. Come on. Oh, you're gonna make me Come on. Come 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 on. Bah, bah, bah. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now it should work. So one last thing we can do is you may have noticed that in the high oven, we can only smelt one thing at a time, which, although it's going pretty fast now at 2,000 degrees, it's still not great. We would like to be able to smelt multiple things at once, especially once we increase our production of stuff. It could be a bit of a pain to only have one thing in here. So, is that kind of full? Is that working? It is working. It's just working very, very fast. And that seems to have stopped... Oh, it's on copper now. That's why. Okay. Yeah. So what we can do is we can go ahead and that should smelt. Unless it's changed. I'm pretty sure it can have more than one thing in it. But anyway, what we can do is we can actually upgrade the, uh, the high oven and make it have more ingot slots, which would be very nice indeed. And basically, the way you do that is you add an extra layer onto the top. So we take out that middle one right about there, that one in the top middle there. Add another eight around the top and then put another one, another middle one, I guess, right at the top of that. And then once we've done that, it will have an extra ingot slot in here. And you can do that, I believe, six times. And once this thing becomes seven tall, that's adding uh, four more on, on the top of these three that are already here, it will have the maximum of six slots that you can actually have in a high oven. And then it will be fully functional and good to go. And after that, all we have to do is just make sure that we constantly keep it filled up with charcoal so that it doesn't slow down at any given time. Let's throw you back in there. And let's grab a few of these. Hopefully, we can get all the way up to the, uh, the the eight that we need. That's six. This will give us seven. And the last one in our hand will give us eight. It looks like it might not be able to put more than one ingot in there at a time, which is pretty odd. I guess if we want to make this faster, which would be uh, something that would probably interest us, we could put a bunch more of these drains on and have a bunch of those pull out uh, as well. That would work quite nicely, but it would be a bit of a pain. So let me go ahead and do this real quick. We'll try and uh, jump up here. Can we, can we, oh, there we go. Yeah, beautiful. Let's get rid of this. Again, I don't think it's going to lose its inventory just yet. Let's see if we can get out and break these. I hope it doesn't lose its inventory anyway. And then if we do something like this, like so, and we hop back down, you can see it's still got all of its aluminium in there, maybe possibly and you can see it's gone to the slot and it's starting to smell up some platinum now which is pretty nice indeed it did lose some of its temperature i think we let some of the heat out there that's fine it'll build back up fairly quickly and everything should be good to go so with that guys thanks for watching if you did enjoy the video be sure to like and i will see you guys next time for some more clouds of darkness Bye bye